Hello my little carpet beaters. Well we have another vintage Hoover for you and it's one I've shown you before. It's the Hoover Ranger Senior as made famous by the Shake and Vac advert. This one, well I'm hoping it's better. What I'm going to do folks, as I've done many times before, I tend to buy another vacuum. If I've already got it, which I've already got this model, um, I'll buy another one if it looks good and then out of the two I've got I'll make one definitive model to keep. Now the main thing that was wrong with the first Ranger Senior I showed you, the lower cord hook was broken which always annoyed me and on the eBay listing the lower cord hook of this machine seemed intact. Well let's hope it's still intact when I take it out of this box. So obviously the seller has packaged it with the handle dismantled and the bag I'm assuming he's taken the bag off and it looks judging by the random bits of packaging it looks quite well packed so I can already see something wrong with it but never mind okay let's get rid of the cardboard the thing I've noticed that's wrong with it I don't know why it's like this but We've got a lot of bag ties, not doing anything. Obviously this, this is the bellows, this shouldn't be showing, the bag should be covering that. The bag, yeah, it's quite dirty. At least the logo, the Hoover branding is fairly intact. This sort of logo doesn't tend to remove when you wash it, unlike the later Hoover uprights with the circular emblem that just washes off very easily. These plasticized bags, they tend to last. I'd still take care washing it. Don't, you know, go too mad. But yeah, we've got a bag. Ah, oh, right. Well, the upper handle on this one has a chip out of it. I'm going to have to check the model I've got, which I have got actually. I'll, I'll show it in this video. I took it out of the garage a couple of days ago. I found it. So that's broken. And uh, yeah, I think also that, sh that shouldn't have a screw. That's had a repair as well, I think. So that's the first downside of this machine. I might end up just selling this one on and keeping my original, but it's mainly the lower core to come after. Oh. Oh, can you believe it, folks? I just, uh, I must, I think... <laughs> the only reason I got this machine was because it had an intact lower cord hook. Now, I've had this machine for several weeks. I can't complain about it now. <sighs> this is God's way of saying... Roger, you have too many vacuums. And yes, yes, dear Lord, I know I have. And that's why I'm selling so many of them. I just want to have some nice classic machines. I, how did I know that was going to happen? I haven't. I just. <laughs> <sighs> I, I give up. What is the point? Eh? Well, I've not had a rant recently. Have I? Oh, mm, curses. Well, here's the cleaner. I just... Uh, does that mean now I'm going to have to look for a third one of these just to get an intact lower cord hook? Because you can't buy them, folks. Not in the colour. Not in this uh, sort of avocado green. You can't buy them. You can possibly get a white one. But, as you know, I like my vacuums in my collection to be as original as I can get them and still even though that is broken I, it looked completely intact on the eBay listing um, it's still I couldn't see any other bits in the box I don't know if it's fallen down but even if it wasn't broken yeah I bet the other bits in the box I mean oof, something like this 
I've already got I've already got filthy hands, so no doubt this is going to dirty up my carpet. Something like this, if it was a clean single break, there's another bit missing. I think it's possibly in the box. It's possible I could fix it, but I'd be very careful actually wrapping a cord around this. What a shame. Why didn't I open this sooner? Then I could have complained, but it's I can't complain now. Let's have a look on the underside. There is a model number. Well, it looks pretty clean and tidy. You know, I can't complain about uh, that. You know, somebody's long hair. <laughs> Well, the belt's not too bad, it will need replacing. Now, let's just check. There's very slight movement, but not much. I think it should be okay. It, it, uh, the fan rotates smoothly enough. So, all in all, that looks fine. Oh, I'm just so annoyed by... <laughs> That was the only reason I got this. Let's pop the, the belt is too easy to put on, so yeah, it will need replacing. Let's pop the base plate back. So this was the first of the, well, the first restyle of a Hoover Senior since the sort of 652 type machines. Um, but you'll see, this is a U4014, we'll have a look at the rating plate, we'll be able to date this. But all Hoover did with this, they basically took the metal casting from the original Senior, because it, it still has a metal body. So they took the metal body and just shoved on a redesigned hood to cover the whole of the metal body. Anyway, let's date this machine. We've got, uh, just down here at the bottom, we've got the rating sticker, so we'll have a look at that. This is Hoover model U4014, 240 volts, 50 hertz, 400 slash 600 watts, because this does have a two-speed motor. It boosts to 600 watts when you attach the hose. Serial number U4014 9111035, trademarks of Hoover, Lim Hoover Limited, made by Hoover Limited, Great Britain. So the serial number U4014 is the model number, and then we've got a 9 which uh, I would say this makes this 1979. Okie dokie, well I've assembled the handle of the cleaner and I've had to rewire this plug because the inner insulation was showing and uh, it's a bit of an unusual plug. It's a fairly modern plug, it's got the insulated pins but it is actually made in England but it's got uh, a special little loop on it and these were sold for people who had trouble pulling out a regular plug. It just made it easier, people with arthritis, etc., to be able to grab the plug. Rather ugly. I don't think I'll be keeping it for this machine. But anyway, there we go. Now, I was about to place the bag, or was actually going to see why the bag isn't on properly. So I've opened it up and we can reveal ugh, a genuine paper Uber bag. So this takes the very old-fashioned, I think it's H1 bags that fit with the rubber band, but yeah, it is absolutely filthy in there, so there's possibly a hole in this bag. So we'll take that off and uh, we'll fit something a bit better. Is it H1? Yes, it's H1, but at least I've used a, a genuine bag. I'll pop that to one side. And let's try and clean this out. It's absolutely disgusting in there. So I'll get another vacuum that I'm using at the moment and we'll try and remove most of this muck.
Okie dokie, so I've got the bag cleaned up, I've fitted it to the machine, I've sorted it out at the bottom so the bellows are out of sight. I've fitted a fleece bag, so I need to see if it's working. This will have, I suspect, will still have the suppressor inside, so we could have a big bang. We've had, we've got nothing because it's not switched on. It should be switched on now, folks. Well, this Hoover Ranger Senior doesn't sound too bad. I think I need to put a new belt in. It was struggling a bit on the carpet. It was almost on the top setting, the highest setting. On the high setting though, it wouldn't have been touching the carpet at all. I just moved the lever at the back one notch up and it was on sort of the medium setting, but it was pulling the suction so powerful on these machines. It was pulling the carpet up and stalling the brushes a bit. These have very good airflow being a dirty fan machine with a nice big fan, bigger than the Hoover Junior. And unless they've got a tip top belt, the brushes will stall on certain carpets, especially my notorious living room carpet, which is uh, it's a struggle for many, many cleaners. But the motor, at least on this, sounds pretty good. Obviously, the headlight bulb doesn't work. I expected that. I'm not sure how many people even bothered when they had these from new, even bothered replacing the bulb when they went. But I expect it was something that was done when the cleaner was serviced, because back in the day, people did service their vacuums, especially vacuums like this. Maybe some, some people would take it once a year to be serviced, or if it needed fixing, they'd take it to the repair shop, the authorized Hoover service dealer. Um, and maybe when this was serviced, they would have put a new bulb in. So everything motor-wise anyway sounds pretty good. There's no uh, real problem with this clean, I don't think, electrically or mechanically. You could see here when I was pressing on the micro switch just here, this is what activates when you slide in the converter to use this machine for above floor cleaning. It just boosts the suction. It is possible if you wanted to, to sort of tape that switch up and uh, have it on 600 watts when you're cleaning carpets, but that would be whew, a bit overkill, I think. 400 watts is more than adequate combined with the beats as it sweeps as it cleans action. That's more than enough for a good clean carpet. Well, we've looked at this one. I've got my other one out. It's been in storage. And I have to say, had the lower handle and cord hook of this one arrived intact, I think Possibly that's all I would have swapped over. All that, well, look, without me telling you, I'll just get my other one in and we can see them side by side. Okay, well, here's the one you've seen earlier. And now I've got them side by side. I can see that this one has definitely changed color. Now, I'm pretty sure that the color of this machine is more the color it would have been. You can see that this one has gone a little bit darker. 
But all in all though, looking at them, the hood on this one, despite it, it's discolored, is in better condition than the hood on this one. It's still pretty good, but this has got some telltale, fairly deep scratches at the side here, where the housewife has been a little bit careless. So, yeah, I'm in a quandary. Obviously, again, we can see where the discoloration has taken place on the lens here. This is the lens as it should be. It's slightly damaged at the top though. <laughs> I might have in my spares another lens. So this cleaner will get a bit more of a spruce up. But on the whole, I don't know whether just to sell this after a bit of a clean up, some uh, new belt and everything, might just sell this on as it is, or use it for parts, I don't know. I'm going to try this one out actually. But I know that I've stored this away without the belt. I always slip the belts off when I put a vacuum cleaner into storage. Now I've got this machine out of storage, I can see it suffered a bit of storage damage. I'm pretty sure that this beta bar was not rusty like that. Yeah, that has happened since I stored this away. The brushes on it are much better. Oh, they're quite soft though, but they are longer. That's the trouble. Now it was stored in the garage, but it was uh, wrapped in a cloth shroud and it was also inside a plastic box. But clearly that agitator hasn't enjoyed being in the garage. So this cleaner or both these cleaners are going to be stored inside the house in future. In fact, I'm sorting my garage out at the moment and retrieving any cleaners that really shouldn't be in there. Obviously some of my more expensive older machines have never been in the garage and never will go in the garage but yeah oh and the the fan has developed yeah some sort of a white oh, I don't know what it is mmm yeah well mmm that's interesting but quite disturbing as well you see that's the trouble with storing anything in an outbuilding although it's a you know it's a solid brick built garage and I thought I was storing it correctly being inside you know a lidded plastic box and everything but you know damp gets in and sometimes other things can get in to a vacuum cleaner rodents can nibble away at your cloth bag these plasticized bags seem to survive any nibbling looking at them though what I might do I might just swap the hoods I don't know now I think I'm going to keep them I'm keeping them both for now especially after I've seen what's happened to this one so I don't want to turn this one on with that uh, agitator in so I'm just going to slip off the agitator but I'll use the I'll use the belt it's just yeah Oops, there we are. Yeah, the brushes on this are, yeah, are a lot uh, more worn down. But I'll put the newer belt on. Hang on, what am I doing? No, that's right, no. That's great, I'm putting the agitator from the one I've just opened into here. Oh, hang on, that needs lining up, there we go. That's... I didn't see that's got a bit of hair wrapped around the shaft oh yeah this is a lot tighter I'm gonna have to pull this from behind I think Ugh. I've been very I've got a wound folks on my finger I sliced a deep cut into my finger a couple of days ago when I was uh, cleaning up a Mila upright if you're opening up a Milo upright, folks, the metal base plate, it has knife sharp edges. So be very careful if you take one of those apart. Crikey, that is stiff. Oh, there we go. And I might actually, I'll use the base plate from the one I've just opened. Of course, these are all completely interchangeable probably very similar in age as well oh this has got the uh, 
sticker somewhere different hmm it's interesting right okay i'll put this one to uh, to one side the one i've just opened with the base plates and brush roll of the one that's been in storage i mean i can get that off it's only light rusting brillo pad but yeah mm, this makes me even more determined to to finish sorting out the garage to rescue any other vacuums that might have suffered a bit during the storage although some some i packed away i actually vacuum sealed them i wrapped them up in old duvet covers and old pillowcases vacuum sealed them as well then put them inside a box and then the box was shrink wrapped and <laughs> when i opened those after over a year in storage they came out as fresh as the day i put them in the box this one's got a much nicer mk plug on it well let's hope i don't know if i've still got the suppressor in this machine and if it's uh, been damp mm. We could have an explosion on our hands. Just remember there's no bag in it, but yeah, sounds okay still. Light works. Do you know, if anything, the other one could sound a bit sweeter. I don't know. It's, there's not a lot in it. There's not a lot in it. Might as well plug this one in at the same time. And then I'm going to show you a very special senior in a minute. So stay tuned, I know you're bored, but there's more to come, folks. Right, let's plug them both in. This Put them both on the highest setting so we can just hear the motor oh well this is going to sound different because there's no belt attached now is there oops <laughs> well it's very hard to judge now because obviously I slipped the, well, there's no, uh, there's no brush roll in that either, is there? And there's an absolute filthy mess on the carpet that I've only just cleaned. It's got dirty again, Never mind. So, <sighs> really, really disappointed that this both, well, the top hook's not too bad, but it's been repaired because it should. The top hook on this one is perfect, he says, while he breaks it very carefully it does turn down like it should do Ooh, it's very brittle they get very brittle obviously the early machines had metal hooks so they didn't break but i've made a right filthy mess there okay well we'll put these to one side as i said i'm i'm going to keep them both and then at some point just decide what bits to use with which cleaner also, the mains cable on the one I've just unboxed is, uh, has been taped up, so it's been damaged. The mains cable on the other one is more or less perfect. But yes, the colour of this one is better. So, um, I don't know what to do. I, I could, in the summer, try the old retro brighting using a different method. Submerging it in water, not just putting the uh, hydrogen peroxide stuff just pasting it on that didn't work um so if i do ruin it then at least i've got another hood and i do have a few spare roundels as well that will fit this so we'll put these to one side uh i'll clean up this mess and i'll go and fetch the later version of this hoover ranger senior that you've never seen before well folks here's a treat for any of you who have managed to stay awake this is probably one of the last hoover seniors ranger seniors of this particular shape this is a model u4274 and uh, it was an exclusive model and i'm pretty sure this exclusive hoover senior was made for the co-op i think i've got uh, 
a brochure somewhere featuring this on one side and some exclusive compact cleaners on the other. Now I've had this a few years and did make an unboxing video. No idea where it's got to, but uh, when I opened this the first time round, there was a bit of damage. I've sorted out the damage and packed it up again. Now, this has never been outside the house. So I did wrap. This is not how it was actually packed when I first unboxed it, folks. But this isn't a plasticized bag. It's got the infamous Hoover roundel that will come off if I wash it. But since this was new in the box when I got it, there's no need to wash it. Might get my steamer out and get the creases out of the bag because it's been stored away so long. Look at that. This one's made in Britain, absolutely perfect bulldog sticker there. So this is the top handle, cream and brown. Lovely 80s colours. And here's the lower handle. I have had this assembled and used, so you can't avoid it. The paint always starts to come off the handles when you assemble them. It's just starting to show here. But I want to use my machines, folks. There's no point. I've realized there's no point in having a collection of vacuum cleaners that you just don't use. What's the point in having them? Might as well use and enjoy them while you've got the chance. That's what I say. As you can see, it's been wrapped up in an old pillowcase, I think that is. And this takes different bags. We have the uh, easier to fit push on bags. What is the bag code on these? It doesn't say, I'm not really sure. This one's got the clip. The good thing about this type of bag, you can use those fleece for your home H18 bags in this machine. They'll fit on, give you a better seal and far, far better filtration than these single walled paper bags. So in fact, I think this came with the two bags. I have never used it with paper bags. I've always used a fleece bag with this. Now obviously it didn't have a plug on when I initially unboxed it and although it could do with a bit of a clean I have used a fairly age appropriate Volex plug on this. I've even put some pin protectors on. Yeah that is age appropriate. We don't even have insulated pins but it could do with a bit of a clean that uh, plug. Of course this would have come with the instructions which I've got separate. That's been a little bit uh, bit dog-eared that's how to wire a plug and that bit of uh, string is what the cable was wrapped around with I think so here it comes let's hope this is okay as I said this has never been outside the house got a elastic band so much lighter than the two previous seniors because this is all plastic now Now we do have a bit of packaging there, but that wasn't fitted onto the machine properly, which is why when I opened this first time round, one of the wheels was completely smashed. But as you can see, I don't know which wheel it was, but I have managed to replace it. So here's the exclusive Hoover Senior more or less brand new. I've used it for maybe 20 minutes in total. We do have a quick release cord hook at the top, which does seem to be slightly better plastic and a little bit, a little bit of a different design as well. A little bit thicker than the 70s machines. Let's pl I just hope this still works. I think I left the belt on this one. And I'm not sure if I replaced the bulb with an LED one and, and it was flashing. It didn't work successfully. So I'm not sure if I, I put in a normal bulb. I'll try it on that setting. <laughs> it sounds quite different, doesn't it? But I thought the belt was on, 
but I don't think it is, which is why it's sounding quite different. We can start to see some of the differences on the underside of this machine compared to its 70s brothers. Now the first change to this machine compared to its earlier versions is we now need a screwdriver to remove the base plate instead of having the two clips. You can see it's still shaped for those two clips but uh, I think the re regulations changed and in order to access the belt you now have to undo screws. This happened with some other cleaners I'm sure of this era. So we'll undo these. I think they still, on the commercial versions, they still retained the clips because in a com commercial environment you need to be able to change the belt quickly. So I think they still had those fastenings. But this being domestic, we don't. Oh, that is odd. There's no belt in that at all, so I'm going to have to take that out of another one. And if, that does feel quite stiff actually, I'm quite surprised. You can see all the paint is still intact on this, a very nice taupe colour paint, but plastic fan now on this machine instead of the metal fan. I'll just have a quick look at the rating sticker, I won't show you it, U, U4274306510002. Three. I think then, <laughs> I think this is from 1983, so it's quite late for a machine of this type. But I think it was 1984 where this particular style was completely discontinued and Hoover introduced the Power Plus style. But it basically, I think it was more or less the same underneath, it just had a new restyled hood. Much the same way they restyled the 70s model. So I'll just pop that to one side and uh, We'll grab another one. I think this is the one that's got the belt in it. Yes. And we can see side by side the differences. So this senior is from 1978 and this one is from 83. And we can see, well, obviously here's the difference. I can just remove that very easily. And of course, metal fan in this one. And the way the agitator goes in, there's some clips on this metal bodied senior, but no clips on this one. It just slots into place. So I'll take out, it does seem a little bit, bit stiff that, I don't know why. Just pop that on. It'll only go in one way because there's a different shaped cutout either end. So you can't get them round the wrong way. I have to do it from this direction again to pull the belt into position. We've still got the same diagram to show us which way the belt goes on. There we go. And we can see that Hoover have done away with two major things. They've done away with the way the tools fit. So with this later senior, the tools fit on with a pan converter and with the 70s version we have the converter here at the back where you slide the hose in and we've got the micro switch to boost the power obviously this is just for well it's 420 watts this machine which the 20 watts accounts for the headlamp but single speed because obviously it's a different way of fitting the tools and it's so much cheaper made the shape of the casting will be exactly the same. I wouldn't be surprised if it went into the same mould. But obviously instead of pouring in molten metal, they poured in molten plastic. But you can see lots of changes. This machine obviously is going to be a lot lighter being mainly plastic. But you can see how similar they are, but also how different. And if I was to take the hood off this machine, I'll do it because if you're watching this now you're quite interested so what's another couple of minutes going to matter so I will take the hood off this one if I can find my correct screwdriver I believe it's just two screws I have unplugged it I think yes yeah, just two screws to remove the hood in fact while we're at it folks I might as well remove the hood of the other so we can see the inside of both cleaners so yes I'm sure it's just two screws on this and I think it could be just two on the other one. I 
Another change as well, this has a separate on off switch and handle release. This Hoover Senior have combined it as they did on the Hoover U1036 Junior. They combined the on off and the handle release pedal. They've done it on this machine as well, which again reduces costs, cuts out the time it takes to produce the cleaner. So here's the hood. Is this the one? Yes, this is the one I've just opened. So it always does have the suppressor in. A bit of black carbon dust in there. So with the top off, we can see this cleaner's heritage with the metal base. If this was sprayed white, this would form the base of the Hoover Senior that went before. You can even see here where the roundel would have been placed. But it was a very quick and easy way of adapting quite an old design cleaner, making it a bit more modern for the 70s. Instead of redesigning it from the ground up, they just took the hood off and plonked a new hood on the base of this because I suspect if I got an earlier hood, it would just fit over the top of this. No problem whatsoever. I've removed the two screws from the underside of this cleaner and of course that's something the customer would have done if they could be bothered to change the headlight bulb when it blew. So it's just two screws. I just have to ease out the hood. It's a little bit tricky on these because you've got the uh, handle release pedal getting in the way. There is a knack to it and I can't remember what that knack is. No, that's not going to help. Or is it? No, I think it does have to be this way. It will tell me in the instruction book. I should have got that out. <laughs> oh, there we go. There we are. There we go. Phew. Right, here's the underside of this one. No carbon dust showing. And now we can see this, it's already getting a bit dusty inside. This has had a completely new molding made, quite different to the metal casting of the 70s machine. But, you know, looking at the motors, very, very similar. This is the top bearing. I've still got the suppressor in here. I'm surprised I left it in, to be honest. But we still have that uh, ticking time bomb. There's been a lot of discussions about should you remove the suppressor or shouldn't you? But I've seen a video recently of an ex Hoover service engineer and they used to remove the suppressors as a matter of course. So if a Hoover engineer removes the suppressors and thinks that's okay, then it's fine for me to do it rather than try to replace a suppressor. This one does look fine at the moment. There's no sign it's going to blow but uh, it's something I will have to do at some point. And I can see I've obviously put a traditional bulb in there because the LED one I tried in this machine when I first got it just flickered. So I, I had to go back to the traditional bulb as fitted to this Ranger Senior here, but obviously this bulb had blown, which uh, obviously is a very common thing to happen. But it's interesting to see, well, for me anyway, hopefully for you, if you're still watching this, I think you're still interested. But even though they've cheapened this considerably, they've made it lighter, they've obviously removed some components, it's still a very good cleaner. You know, I've got to go on and on about how Hoover have gone downhill, but every manufacturer, I think, does not produce cleaners to the same standard they produced them if they're manufacturing in the 70s or earlier. It's just, it's just a fact of life. But anyway, it's very interesting to see. Very, very similar, but different. Quite ingenious the way they managed to produce these cleaners, you know, at less cost. Getting away with, getting rid of components they didn't need and uh, making some components plastic but all in all, I think uh, I'd say the motor, I would say the motor housing is more or less identical. I don't think they've changed that at all. It looks exactly the same as this one.
Well, there you go, folks. A thorn between two roses. Obviously, I'm joking. Yes, this machine has been made to a cheaper standard than these 70s models, but it's still a good machine. It still works, but obviously this is more or less still new in the box. So I would expect it to work. But I can tell you, this works far better than many, many, many modern cleaners you can get today and certainly better than any cordless cleaner I've ever used. Okay, it looks old fashioned, but does it matter what it looks like as long as it's getting your carpets deep down clean? It beats as it sweeps, as it cleans clean. There you go. I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's gone on for a bit too long because I've shown you things I wasn't going to show you. But anyway, hopefully you've got uh, more of an idea what these Hoover Seniors are like, what differences were made. And um, it will always have a soft spot in my heart. And of course, the Avocado Green Senior will always be famous for featuring in the Shake and Vac TV commercial. If you have any comments or questions about any of these Hoover Ranger Seniors, please comment below and I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Bye for now.